Welcome back to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. Last month, the Northern Elders Forum released a communique calling for the restructuring of Nigeria. It followed the conclusion of a two-day Northern Summit organized by the Forum in Kaduna. And just yesterday, the Forum's Director of Publicity and Advocacy, Hakim, or Dr. Hakim Baba Ahmed, called for the impeachment of President Muhammadu Buhari over Nigeria's security situation. We're joined this morning by Dr. Baba Ahmed to look at the state of the nation. All right, uh, we seem to have uh, lost him briefly. We're, we're going to connect with him in a bit and uh, get to talk about you know all of this you know that is going on. Uh, we ho hope it's going, to, um, it's going to be a very interesting conversation. Um, there's so much we've already started with, of course, uh, getting a clearer picture of what it is like in northern Nigeria. All right, um, once again, good morning to Dr. Baba Ahmed. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. You, uh, of course, is one of the things that we shared in the news this morning. Your call for President Muhammad Buhari to be impeached, uh, citing the security challenges Nigeria is currently dealing with. So let's quickly start from there. Um, why do you think so? And what, what's, you, what's your argument with regards to uh, the calling for the president's impeachment? Uh, well, we, we have to understand that the, um, the comment about impeaching the president. Um, uh, okay, so we lost contact again with Dr. Um, Ahmed. We'll, we'll try to reconnect with him and uh, continue this conversation. But really, this is one that must be had. 2023 elections is drawing nearer and the policy seems to be you know, heated with conversations regarding the presidency, his performance in the past you know, years in government. And one, one more you know, statement we've seen from groups like this is saying that the presidency does not even deserve to rule the country for the next two years. And you know, they back this up with their claims of just what the statistics are saying regarding insecurity. We saw in the news just last week as to how many people have been kidnapped in the country within just these two months and how many people have been killed by Boko Haram terrorists. It's just a new year, first quarter of the year, and we've seen students being kidnapped. Yeah. Conversations about the release of Greenfield University seems to be dying down. We have not made headway so far regarding the release of the students. So these conversations must be had yeah. regarding security of so, Nigerians, welfare of the people. How much has the government accomplished, you know, with its time in power, promising change and promising to, you know, just take us, you know, from where we were to where we need to be. So these assessments really must be made. We have right. Dr. Ahmed back with us. Good morning again. I was saying that uh, I made the issue of impeachment came in the context of um, uh, discussing the options that are available to the country and the government. And, and one of them is uh, obviously that uh, President Buhari recognized himself uh, that as a leader, he cannot lead the country through its current challenges and difficulties. Um, and this is borne by the evidence on the ground. He has consistently failed to lead. Uh, the military and law and order institutions, intelligence institutions, to find a way out of um, insecurity. Um, if he fails to do that, um, a quite impeachment uh, when the president, uh, if or when the president performs some key uh, functions uh, of his office, and um, there are a lot of we find um, impeachable offenses. If, if we, Serious. Um, the third one is that uh, we increase the pressure on both the assembly and the president to try and see if we can improve their responses to our, our problems. And, and the last one, the, the, the national elite uh, organizes uh, activities that are within the law um, and, and try and see if we can provide uh, um, options, if we can provide solution, which if we can prepare for the future rather than just sit on our hands and wait for two years for uh, President Buhari to, uh, to leave the country. Because the way things are going, we could actually lose the country in the next two years. So, so, so what are the, you know, quickly, what signs do you, you know, see that tell that we, Nigeria may not survive the next two years? Well, as I said, one is a radical, radical the government. Um, I don't see that in the... Uh, in the, on the horizon, if they could change anything, they would have changed it. This is an administration that is chronically resistant to change. 
um, both the president and those who support him, including people who support him in the state assembly. Um, they don't believe that uh, we should change the way they govern quickly because the nation has a problem. Uh, but it's still there, it's a, it's a hope. Uh, but, uh, Second one is uh, the more more of the elite, more of the young people, more of people who are concerned that uh, uh, the rules caving in on us should uh, should organize legitimately and legally to, to put pressure on our leaders to do to do the needful. The needful really is to uh, everybody should play the roles that they're supposed to play. This is the those who should consult with each other should consult. Those who should bring down the temperature should do so. Those who should exercise their constitutional duties to put pressure on them. And uh, as, at all costs, we must avoid the issue where we are set against each other. That appears to be um, what is happening, whether it's part of the game plan to divert attention from the yeah. failures of the administration, or whether it is to um, uh, play, play to a different script where uh, communities are fighting each other, the North is fighting the South, um, the Institute. East uh, is in the south, uh, purity in the north. Uh, whatever, we must avoid playing into the hands of people who just want to make the situation work. And you, you require to do this. You require political parties. While this is where a major weakness of the country is showing. Our uh, two do not appear to recognize the fact that. A major role in terms of what happens now. I mean, the, all that we is just planning to grab power again. Um, and you have to wonder what they are going to do with this power. By the time they get to 2023, they would have destroyed it themselves. They would have destroyed each other, and they will still be clamoring to govern this country. Mm -hmm. So that's a gap. So there's a lot that needs to be done. What we must not do is not simply say. The country is in trouble. There's nothing we can do. So let's get in there. That something can be done. Mm. Dr. Ahmed, flashing our minds back to 2015, we know how the Northern Elders Forum supported and endorsed President Muhammad Buhari, you know, to run for presidency. A spokesman of the NEF at that time, Ango Abdullahi, you know, mentioned that um, the North deserve the chance to, you know, produce the next president of the country and that President Muhammad Buhari should, you know, be voted for. I mean, years later, the NEF has switched gears. Why? What changed? Um, I, I'm sorry for technical reason. It was and your question wasn't very clear, but I first I, I suspect I understand what you're saying. Um, our convener now, our Professor Abu Abdullah, who was then playing the role I'm playing now, um, uh, supported uh, President Muhammad. We all did. The Indian Elders Forum and a lot of groups uh, in the country, in the north and south, supported President Bai um, because we believed he was likely to, he was going to do better than President Jonathan. Uh, we saw President Jonathan was soft on security, he was soft on corruption, we didn't see the kind of firm, decisive leadership um, that we needed to fight Boko Haram in, at, at, at uh, its formative stages. And we supported President Buhari, we campaigned for President Buhari in the country, outside the country. Um, I, th there's no reason to regret that. We, we put on the basis of what we saw as uh, in the best interest of the country. However, um, it wasn't long before we realized that we could just have, might have made a mistake. President Buhari had built more in power than in using power with his difficulties. Um, and it, it turns out that uh, he appears to have um, achieved his objective. He contested for power in 2003, he didn't get elected. 2003, he didn't get elected. 2011, he didn't get elected. Got elected in 2015. Nigerians finally said, Yes, we'll give you a chance. To and um, he appears to have uh, drawn a line there. So that he, that he had become president, no problem of Nigeria was worth wasting his time. Um, we didn't see that, that, that energy, that, that focus, that competence, that firmness that we had hoped to see applied to the process of governance. Um, we saw a slow, indecisive, um, cumbersome uh, governance, um, no new ideas, uh, no no competent hands around him to help him to, to push the country through the difficulties that he had. 
We didn't right. see so, Dr. Ahmed. Good ideas coming through that. Yeah. All right, yeah. Dr. Ahmed, if, if you admit that, you know, in 2015, the NEF had, you know, canvassed for, you know, votes and asked the people of the North in Nigeria to vote for President Muhammadu Buhari, he came into power. We also saw how, you know, criticism of the, by the NEF of the president, you know, how it took about six months to, you know, put his cabinet together. And now you say, yes, that was a mistake. Do you think now calling for the president to be impeached can fix that wrong? Well, look, I, and let me remind you, I, I think there are gaps in your history. I, pardon me for saying this. In 2019, we actually campaigned against the president. 2015, 2013 to 2015, we campaigned for him. Um, after four years of his first term, um, he wanted to be reelected. We assessed him. And uh, we told Nigerians uh, we didn't think President Buhari should be trusted to, uh, with another four, four years. We foresaw the possibility that things were likely to get worse. And we told Nigerians openly, and we said it many times uh, when we gave our facts. Uh, and we warned Nigerians not to elect President Buhari. Um, uh, but they did. Um, we started the second term, and things got considerably as we moved on. Um, and uh, that's that's where we are now. Uh, we we have to exercise other constitutional. Uh, one of them is uh, is an impeachment. People yeah. worry about uh, impeachment because it's they say oh, I'm tricky to read funding, and they forget the fact that the people who drew up our constitution. Um, had foreseen this, this possibility. For many reasons, a president could be unable to exercise responsibility. Um, we even had a president who died and was succeeded by another one. Um, I, a president could commit uh, impeachable crimes and uh, be impeached. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not a, an idle insertion. It is simply that those who do the constitution recognize the fact that a, a president is a human being. He could make mistakes. He could commit crimes. And uh, there could be reasons why he shouldn't continue to be in office. So we are not asking for anything out of the Constitution. It's not an illegal thing. Um, yes, it's unusual. But look, we are living in unusual times. Everything about Nigeria today is unusual. We are living in a country no one, no one ever anticipated in the last 10 to 15 years we would ever see. So um, we, we believe that uh, this, is, this is the right way to go. We didn't just bring up this issue of impeachment. All point. right. I want you to so speak. What is the choice? The president is not going to. Yeah, uh, apologies. Uh, I, I want you to speak, you know, with regards, um, you know, maybe a, a, a completely different opinion that um, other northern bodies, for example, the Muslim rights concern, MIRIC, we've spoken with uh, Professor Ishaka Kintala on this platform, you know, and, you know, Mirik seems to be on the side of the government and, you know, supports its uh, decisions. For example, with the decision to stand by the Minister of uh, Communications and Digital Economy, um, Issa Pantami. Uh, so I want you to speak re with regards to that. Um, is Mirik and the Nigerian, um, uh, Northern rather, Elders Forum, you know, are, are you in, in the same, on the same page with regards uh, the direction Nigeria is going? and also um, Issa Pantami's uh, um, controversy? Well, URIC is an independent organization. It, has, uh, it, it makes its own minds about event, national events, and it's free to express its opinion um, on, on, on them. We, we don't compete with MIRIC. Um, we, we don't have much of a relationship. Uh, on the Issa Pantami issue, um, we haven't made a position clear because we really didn't believe that uh, there was enough on the ground to to say how it affects the north and how it affects the the rest of the country. Um, we naturally followed uh, this, the the uproar about what he was supposed to have said uh, 10, 15 years ago. We observed his um, um, reaction to to those comments. We observed the presidency's comments about that. Um, uh, our position would be that if uh, the minister has actually committed crimes or transgressions that are inconsistent with his position, then people should should make them available and uh, the law should take its course. If it hasn't, um, then they should just leave the man to do his work. Okay. okay. What I think is sad about the issue is that um, the, the, the manner it was done 
people who created an ethnic and religious uh, uh, context in it, and which makes it a very, which, which made it impossible to really sift the facts from uh, the passions to, to just get a minister out of office. Mm. Uh, these kind of things happen, and they just simply muddle the waters. All right, so um, Dr. Ahmed, looking ahead, you know, regarding the 2023 election, what is uh, the Northern Else Forum saying about this? Is there any endorsement of any candidate in view? You know, what exactly is the NEF looking forward for 2023? What we're looking for is um, a situation where uh, the country comes to terms with the fact that it needs a leadership from 2023 that is radically different from the current leadership. It must be a leadership made up of Nigerians who recognize uh, the fact that they must address insecurity, they must address a crumbling economy. Our economy is actually crumbling. I don't know how much it will hold. With almost great, with almost um, strong certainty, we will end up paying close to 250 naira per liter by the end of, uh, of this year or early next year. Um, that is based on facts and uh, on the projections. Uh, revenue Revenues are dwindling. Um, cost of living is going up. Insecurity is going up. So we need we need a politician or politicians who will, um, who will operate with a sense of mission, a sense of emergency, under the recognition of the fact that the country has to be stitched back. So for 2023, um, Dr. Ahmed, NEF, you know, yeah. unlike 2015, is not saying the 2023 president has to be, you know, from the north. It could be, uh, the NEF could be supporting someone from the south, south, the southeast. Is, is that what it is? We're, we're saying it should be a Nigerian who recognizes the fact that he has to represent everybody's interest. Um, just coming from one part of the country does not qualify someone to be a good president. In fact, on the contrary, it can be a deterrent. I mean, it can be a, a liability. Uh, people may think, okay, I represent uh, the North and therefore I'm only going to protect Northern interest. I represent the East and therefore I'm going to... We want to see if it is possible to de-emphasize identity, um, mm -hmm. regional grouping, ethnic, uh, religious uh, um, identity. Those kind of things are, 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 are partly what brought us here. A lot of people voted for President Buhari um, especially here in the north, because he was northern, because he was Muslim. Um, and, and look at where we are now. And if Nigerians haven't learned the, uh, the setbacks to this tendency to ethnicize leadership, um, then I don't know what, when we are going to learn anything. Well, uh, we must run away from this. And we are not, we're at this stage where we are not going to, go to, going to get involved in this north. It must come from the north, it must come from the south. But we are also not going to um, accept what appears to be a blackmail against the North, unless you guys uh, concede at this stage that the leadership must move to the to a southerner. Uh, there will be more trouble for for northerners in the southern part of the country. That's a very dangerous game to play. Oh, well, um... What is sad is uh, we don't see any of the, these two parties addressing the issue of quality leadership other than rather than Zoning. power grabbing mm -hmm. yeah and all that right. is going to be a major setback for the country all right just before you go is there any parts of you know the last six years um that you might say that the government has done has done well enough and might be considered you know as a plus uh with regards retaining the current um, um uh, well, the apc or whoever else in in uh, 2023 uh Look, when you say things like uh, where, the, where the government has done, governance is, it, it is not judged on the basis of uh, performance in, in one area and mass failures in others. You assess governance in a holistic context. Yes. Um, there, then that's why even the Constitution identified two things that says this is, this is the sole purpose of a government, securing citizens and addressing their welfare. On these two scores, we haven't seen anything that this government has done in the last six years. Um, that gives us confidence that uh, the party, if, if they continue the way they are going, the APC stands any chance of being elected again in 2023. Now, talking about that, uh, we also don't see the, uh, the PDP preparing to assume responsibility where the APC fails, yeah. because all we see is uh, infighting in the two parties, 
they they are playing the same old game uh, in the in the, in spite of the fact that there are new challenges they are being faced um and, and and the two combined the two parties together don't don't give nigerians hope that they 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 will provide the kind of leadership we need post 2023 we we've made terrible mistakes in this country and one of them is that the dominance of these two parties from 1999 to date one has literally brought the country to its knees the other one is finishing up finishing it off Oh. The nation needs uh, options, the nation needs alternatives, and the nation needs um, a new brand of leadership. Mm. If it has to come from the two parties, fine. Otherwise, it should come from another, uh, another party or another group of parties. But Nigeria cannot continue to play the same game okay. uh, that they are playing at this stage. It All right. cannot be the same. All right, Dr. Ahmed. Game. Um, a lot of Nigerians do agree that is, there's, there's a definite need for a thought force, an alternative, you know, to the two ruling parties. But only time will indeed tell. Dr. Ahmed Baba, yeah. um, thank you very much. Uh, you're the spokesperson or the director of publicity and advocacy for the Northern Elders Forum. Thanks for your thoughts on the breakfast this morning. Thank you. All right. We're going to break here, yes, and we'll come back to talk about, you know, the big issue right now, COVID-19 and the new restrictions that the federal government has imposed. Do stay with us.